Hi, welcome to the Moon Art Centre's very first online workshop programme. My name is Ros Wren and I'm a costume designer. I design and make large scale festival decorations and stage sets and I make puppets. And just generally, I like making stuff and I like sharing my knowledge. So I hope you'll enjoy this. Um, in my work, I really like responding to the materials I have on, on hand. I seem to gather all sorts of stuff from various different jobs, and I always like to use those first. Today, what we're going, I'm going to show you how to make a wall hanging that won't look anything like mine, but that's the point. I want you to own this and make it your own and take it wherever you want. So I'll show you how to make something similar to one of these. It's very simple and it can be very beautiful. Um, we're going to be using some uh, natural dyes, some food colouring and some found objects. I haven't been shopping at all for this. This is just stuff that I have on hand. In designing this workshop, I was thinking probably everyone in their home will have someone that's got an old T-shirt. So we, we're going to make um, T-shirt string to make the cords with. Um, I figured everyone in their house is going to either have an old chopstick, a barbecue skewer, or you can go and fossick in your garden for a good stick. So, so what you're going to need today is you're going to need some string to make the tie. You're going to need an old t-shirt, preferably of a light colour. It, it doesn't matter if it's got a bit of pattern on it, that won't matter. <clears throat> a stick, you're going to need some secateurs or some old scissors that don't use the good scissors for just trimming off your twig. Um, some sharp scissors for cutting the fabric. And all I had in my cupboard to make colour with today was I had some turmeric, which is a spice from India makes a fantastic yellow. You can see that there. I've got my little samples happening. I've got some food colouring. I've got some pink and red. But you can use whatever colours you've got on hand if you've got any. If you haven't got any food colouring, don't worry. You can use tea bags. I'm sure everyone's got some tea. And that makes a really nice soft shade of sort of an orangey brown colour. Um, this is a bit left of field. These are black beans. Um, I like using these in cooking, but they also make a really pretty sort of pale lilac-y grey colour. So, that's what we've got. So first off, what we have to do is we have to make our t-shirt string. So what I'll do, get rid of those. So, got my old t-shirt that I've used, obviously I've used it for another project because I've cut the neck out of it. Turn it inside out because that just makes life easier. And we're going to cut the seams off. Whoops. So, we're going to cut the thick hem off first. that and cut cut the t-shirt off from under the arms then we're going to fold it in half and we're going to cut these these side seams off And then we're going to fold it in half again and cut it into strips about oh, my thumb, a cent one and a half centimetres 
a fair bit. So we're just going to cut these. If you find that too difficult, if it's too stiff, if you've only got small hands, you can open it up and that makes life a bit easier. Just takes a bit longer, that's all. You can draw lines on the t-shirt first if you if you want to make sure it's absolutely straight, but it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a bit wobbly or they're different widths. It all adds to the look of it making it yours. You do need sharp scissors for this. Then, once we've done that, and then we're going to choose our stick. So you might want to run off into the garden now and find a stick, or look in your kitchen cupboards for an old chopstick or a skewer. I haven't got any. Oh, some. I've used these um, skewers there. Um, I, I, we've got this native growing in our garden which I really like but it's got too many leaves on so we just want to strip off the leaves Oops. and then probably just trim it down just you can leave some of the nice nuts on there So you want a little stick like that. And this is one that I started earlier. So we're gonna, now we're gonna, we've got our stick. Don't worry about this stuff yet. We'll get to that. Then we're gonna tie on our string to hang it up with. So just measure off a piece of string. You could use cotton. You could even use some t-shirt string if you wanted. That would also be fine. So we're just gonna knot this onto the stick don't chop this little bit off yet I'm going to show you how to hide that in a minute when I get to it so now we've got our little bits of t-shirt strip we open them up and we're going to pull this is a fun bit how you pull it So we do that for each of them. See how much longer they, they come. Then we're going to fold them in half. We fold them in half. We want to make sure that the ends are level. Stretch it out. And with the loop at the top like this, pass it under the stick. And then through and down. Don't pull them too tight yet. Measure the ends. Through, down.
we're getting close to the knot now. So we're going to disguise that tail of string that looks unattractive there. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the string across the back. This is the back we're working on here. We'll see why in a minute. I'm going to go under the stick and over the string. And under the stick and over the string. Might just do one more there. Fill it up nicely. Under the stick, over the string. Okay. So that's all a bit wiggly wobbly now. So what we want to do, we'll turn it round. This is the front here. It looks like a tie knot. So we're just going to just pull these, bit, pull these down so they're a bit tighter. And that little bit of string there, we'll just chop that off. Now, there we go. Now it comes to the colouring it. This is the fun bit. This is the messy bit. If you need to wear rubber gloves, you can. I don't. All of this, all of these products are natural and they might stain your skin for a little bit, but it all washes off. Um, I might just trim these ends. You can leave it however you like, but I think it might be better if it's just a bit more even. But it's up to you. This one here, I did in a V shape. You can just see slight, there's a slight V shape. So this is the fun bit. Now with my colours, I've got a yellow, a pink and a red. So yellow is the lightest, then we go for pink, and the red is the darkest. So I'm going to just put, I'll just get rid of that, so you can see what I'm doing. Hold the string out of the way with a spoon. You can just push, push the strings into the yellow, which is the turmeric. It doesn't matter if you don't go all to the top. This will stain very quickly. Um, turmeric is, oh, well, it stains everything, actually. It'll come off your hands, but don't use your mother's best china for doing this. It'll just be yellow forever. So there we go, there's our yellow. What we want to do now is just blot that because we don't really want too much yellow in the next colour. So I'm just going to lay it over, I have a little cloth ready. Okay. And then we're going to go into the pink. Um, actually, these are a bit short. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour my pink into a shallower bowl because otherwise the strings won't reach. And what we want to do here is not go all the way down to the top where the yellow is. So we're just going to dangle it in the pink just halfway up like that. And then we're going to tap this off again. Okay. And then we're going to oh, we're going to go into the red. But I need this shallow bowl. So now we're going to go into the do some red. Now the recipe for this 
is one teaspoon of food colouring to about a cup of water. But if you want a stronger colour, you can just use more food colouring. I wouldn't use less water though, because you need that amount to soak in. So now we're just going to dip this into the red, but not go up to the level that we went to with the pink. There we are. So this is actually called ombre dyeing. Some people have that done to their hair and it looks very nice. So, can you see, see the different colours? Now all you have to do is let that dry. And you can trim the ends if you want. And then you can, you can thread beads onto this if you wanted. You could put things from the garden. You could sew leaves, you could sew flowers. You can glue old toys, you can do whatever you want. You can just make, have a look around and be inventive with that. If you're going to, if you've got different colours, then always, when you're dyeing um, the string, always start with the lightest colour first. So, if you've, say, got, for instance, blue and green, make up a lighter dilution of green and do the green, and then a stronger dilution of blue. And then you can dip those colours as well. And you can make, you can make all sorts of different colours just depending on what you've got. Um, with the tea, you actually, that's all you've got at home. What you can do is you can dip it all in. You, you need to soak. With the tea and the beans, you need to leave your strings in the solution for a longer time. But the longer you leave it, the darker it will be. So you can start off... I just got these. You can start off just by... leaving it like that, and then go and have a cup of tea or go out into the garden and play or read a book or something. So that will get quite dark. And then you can push it in a bit more later, but don't leave it as long. And then you'll still get that ombre look. And this is really interesting here because you can see how, see how if you use a different colour t-shirt, you're actually making different colours. So this one, on the green, it hasn't been in anywhere near long enough. It hasn't actually changed the colour, but you can see the colour change on the lighter colours. Let me just squeeze that out and see if... I wanted to show you how the colours differ on different fabric, um, different colours. So let's go into the red. Let's see what... Let's see what the red colouring does on the blue, the green, the pale yellow and the white. What have we got here? So on the white, we've got more of a red. Because we've gone over pale yellow, this colour is more yellow. The red on the blue has made it go purple. And the red on the green has made it go brown. Excuse me, this is a very old t-shirt covered in paint. But you can see that that's a much browner colour. So the colours you get after the dyeing will depend on the colour of your t-shirt to start with. Anyway, it's fun to try. So this little project is all about using what you have, recycling and staying safe at home. And I hope you have loads of fun with it.